A few weeks ago, I wove what I'm calling a landscape painting, and I absolutely loved that process. And so today, I wanna to try weaving a nighttime sky landscape. Let's get started. I already picked some colors, and they're gonna be this navy. I will put the list in the description box below, but we have this navy as well as this navy, and it's got some stuff going on. So I thought this could be the sky. Since I'm using such dark colors today, I'm gonna switch up the tabletop just so you guys can see it a little bit easier. Okay, we're gonna use our regular size flat pack frame loom. There'll be a list of all the tools and materials in the description box below. First, I need to decide which warp string to use. My initial thought was to use black, but since I'm using so much navy, I'm kind of unsure if I'm gonna like the way that that looks. Let's grab the black and just see. Yeah, I don't think I want the black. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use linen because it's at least not as dark as white, but it's gonna blend into the background still a lot better than a white. Next thing I need to figure out is how wide this piece is going to be. I wanna use this dowel, I think, so, which actually fits perfectly inside my loom. So as long as I stay about here, I'm thinking, okay. Something I like to do when I wanna hang my piece from the loops is I count how many loops there are to make sure that hopefully there's an amount that I can group things evenly all the way across. So I have 15 loops, therefore I can do them in groups of three and that'll work really well for me. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Since I have 15 loops, I know that I need 15 groups of my fringe. I'm thinking what I wanna do is use this navy as the fringe as well as some sort of mountain silhouette situation and then use the one with all these interesting speckles and stuff in the sky it's going to be very flat woven but then i want to add detail um i don't totally know how yet but i think that'll be a good base so for my fringe i used to always use this yarn and do groups of three, but honestly, it, it makes the fringe really thick. So I'm kind of wondering if I could get away with groups of two, and maybe we'll just try it and see where it goes. So in that case, I'm gonna need 30 total, and I don't wanna take from, what's happening here? I don't wanna take from the outside of the ball, because then it's just gonna fly around all over the place. So I'm gonna reach inside because this is a center pull ball. I'm gonna try it, oh, there it is. I found the end, so that'll be easier. And I think for this one, I'm just going to use my loom as a way to measure out the fringe itself. So I'm literally just going to flip it this way and wrap it around this way. Ideally, I would do this, you know, before I put the warp on, but I didn't totally know for sure how wide the warp was going to be. So I needed to do that first in order to figure out how many fringe strings I would need. All right, so now we have our beautiful fringe. And then next one I'm going to do, since I know the base of this is this navy color, I'm going to use this navy yarn and do my whole weaving setup situation. If you want a tutorial for how I like to start every weaving, click right here. All right, all the fringe is on, so next we're gonna move on to the actual weaving. I was kind of thinking it would be neat to do some sort of like mountainscape in the foreground and just kind of weaving a silhouette of it and then adding detail later. So I'm gonna grab a pen or a pencil preferably, and figure out where I want these mountains, I guess. I need to leave enough room for my dowel at the top, which I don't even know how long that's gonna be, but we'll say it's somewhere in there. So then for my mountains, maybe I only want them to go to about here at the very top of them, and then this will all be sky. Okay, I'm just gonna start and we're gonna see where this takes us. So I'm gonna grab a decent amount of this navy yarn. And we're gonna see what we can do. So I'm just gonna be using plain weave to 
leave this entire piece basically. So I'm gonna start with just plain weave for a number of rows till we start to get to where it's, to where there are actual peaks. So I think what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna make this pattern a little bit, just a touch smaller. And I'm going to just tape it directly to my loom so that I can just easily follow it without it shifting around on me. So that's gonna go about here. It's gonna be a little different than it looks like on the loom because what we're dealing with here is a single warp. And so there are some limitations with that. So you can see already that this peak is gonna end up in a bit of a different spot than I had originally intended, but I'm totally okay with that because I'm just using this as a bit of a guide. So I think I'm actually gonna cut this off and that's gonna be, this one's gonna have definitely some extra ends to tuck in. So that's one little mountain peak. And then I need to do, I think another one right here. So basically what I'm doing now is just going back and weaving triangles on top of what I did down here. So I'm just reducing one at a time as I go to create that triangle shape. Now had I done a double warp, I could have done more detail because we have more warp strings. And again, we're gonna add some definition to these later. So I'm not too worried that they're, I don't know, like they, they look, they don't look like much yet. Okay, so I think we've got all our mountains in there now. Lots of ends to tuck in back there, which is not my favorite thing, but I think that'll work. Again, it doesn't, it honestly doesn't look like much now. So I'm hoping once we bring in the background, it'll all kind of, come together. So we're gonna have even more ends to tuck in now because now we have to fill in all those areas with this other yarn. Let's see if I can find the end. I'm just gonna go ahead and start filling in all these empty spaces around the mountains and then weave straight up. Okay, my mountains have kind of disappeared, but I'm gonna keep moving forward. Actually, you can kind of see them. They're very subtle, but we're gonna fix that later. Okay, where am I on this one? So, okay, so I have gone as far up as I want to, I think. So I'm going to just finish this off with a twining stitch. Okay, now that I have this part woven, I'm kind of debating if I should tuck in the ends before we get to the fun part, which to me is like the decorating of this to like give this some definition, make it look like a true night sky. I think that's probably a good idea because I think I want to do some needle felting and I think if the ends are all tucked in, that's just gonna make my life easier later, just in case I felt into those ends. Does that make sense? So I'm just gonna flip this around, tuck in all, all of these ends, and then we can do the fun part. So I've got the whole thing basically done here, and now we need to start adding some definition, some detail. In my mind, this is kind of the stage where we get to decorate it. So. I think we should start with the mountains. I think I wanna do some needle felting to add maybe some snowy, I know, I know, it is spring. <laughs> and I'm gonna add some snow to the mountains. These are Rocky Mountains, okay? Just to recall what we've done here, I'm gonna outline these for you so you can kind of see where they are. 
that doesn't really look anything how it is. But we're gonna we're gonna fix that. So I have one mountain peak that starts here, and you can kind of see that that mountain goes down there. Maybe if I zoom in, that will help you guys be able to see it a little bit better. But it's pretty. These colors are so similar. It's pretty hard to make out um, what you're looking at here. But we're gonna try to change that. Okay, so that's kind of one mountain a little bit more defined. So now I'm gonna move on to the next. Okay, I'm really liking this. Oh my gosh. Sometimes I have a hard time with sort of these like painterly looking things, but I'm really liking this. I kind of like that the snow is really wispy looking, like it's been kind of blown there, but also that it's not so, I don't know. I think by it not being so dense, like you can see a little bit of the, the navy blue coming through. There's something about that I really like. I think it just makes it look less, maybe less like an illustration and more like a painting, if that makes sense. Instead of like solid blocks of color, we have a little bit of variation and detail happening there. <laughs> okay, this one got a little weird. Um, I was trying to make it look different and I might've gotten too different. Actually, even just that helped. Okay, one more mountain and then we can see what we can add to the sky to make it a little bit more nighttime sky-ish. So the sky, my thoughts were to potentially do, I'm just gonna use this as a stand-in moon, but my thoughts is it might be really cute to do some sort of moon. Now that I'm looking at this, I'm wondering if that moon should be yellow because I really don't want this whole thing just to be blue and white. And I'm also, wondering about doing some sort of stars, which could be in the form of maybe little French knots, which is an embroidery stitch. I think that could be really cute. But what can we do for a moon? Maybe just, yeah, like I do think bringing in some of this yellow, maybe over here. I feel like that could be really pretty. I guess I need to decide a size. And I mean, you could really do any size. I also have, I don't know if I wanna use this though. I do have some actual felt and I almost wonder if it would be easier to cut out a circle of felt and then felt into that. Almost so it's kind of like a template. So it actually ends up circle circular because that could be tricky otherwise. So maybe, I mean, we could just try it. We could just try it. Oh, I, I like this already. I feel like that's super cute. So I'm thinking of adding some actual wool. Well, this is wool, but some roving to it so that it's an interesting texture and not just a flat felt moon. But I'm thinking somewhere in there looks really good. So I kind of want to just see if this will even work. So I kind of want it right there. Really liking that texture. Like it's, I don't know. It just, it, it makes it feel a little bit like paint texture. And I love that. We've got a moon. And I think that really adds some color that this was kind of missing. So now let's talk about the rest of this. I have a few thoughts. One of them is to do some sort of wispy clouds in the sky. Another one, like I said, is to do some sort of stars, which I could achieve with, you know, maybe some French knots. And I guess we could really try both. And maybe it's not and or, like maybe it is both. Let's just try it and see what happens. You could totally do this with needle felting too, but I'm kind of thinking that adding another element of texture might be nice. 
just to give it some more variation. I'm gonna try to find a slimmer needle. And I can always, if I don't like this, I can cut it out later. So that's why I'm thinking we just, we just try it. I think that's already looking kind of cute. This thinner yarn is definitely, I think a good option for this. So we have some stars, we've got our moon, and, and now I'm just kind of wondering about just trying to lighten up the bottom maybe. Does this make any sense? <laughs> or am I just ruining it now? Ugh! Does this make sense to you guys? I hope so. It's happening. And it's like, I'm kind of covering up a lot of the background, but I don't know, for me, there's something missing. By now, you're probably yelling at the screen for me to stop. <laughs> but hear me out. <laughs> what if there was some purple mixed in there? Ooh. I'm gonna finish this up and then we're gonna look at the finished piece. Okay, you guys, are you ready to see this? Because I am so happy with it. Without further ado, here's the final piece. Okay, how cute is this? I am so happy with the way that this turned out. I am so glad I added the extra color up here and I just think it all ties in really beautifully. If you enjoyed this video, watch this one next. About three hours, that's not bad.